You must believe in the promises of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What are the promises of Allah? That you will be forgiven. If you work hard in this month, the promise of Allah is that you will be forgiven. If we fail to believe in this, if we still think that I, even though I worked hard, I fasted despite it being difficult, I protected my eyes from looking at haram, I protected my tongue from speaking things that I shouldn't be saying, I stood up in the nightly prayers, Salatul Taraweeh, Qiyamul Layl, I had my suhoor, my iftar, I made dua, and still I feel like I'm not going to be forgiven, this is a lack of faith. It sounds counterintuitive. This person did so much good deeds, but still that they're having this lack of faith. They think that, no, who can forgive me? I did such wrong that Allah wouldn't forgive me. This is a lack of faith. Allah has promised us that He'll forgive us. So we must have yaqeen in the promises of Allah. We must have conviction in what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has told us He will do. And if we do these actions, just like in this hadith, those who fast in the month of Ramadan with Iman, number one, and number two, Ihtisaban, which is expecting that reward. Knowing that that reward is in store for us in the hereafter. That is what Ihtisab is. These are the two conditions. Number one, I believe that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will forgive me in this month if I do the fasting and the standing in prayer correctly, inshallah. If I fast in the correct manner, which is not just avoiding food and drink, but it's also avoiding sin altogether, avoiding all kinds of sin. If I fast like this and I stand in the prayers, Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says, Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala will forgive me. So I have faith in that number one. And when I do the action, I expect it. You know, in the, in the back of our minds, we feel like, you know, I've done something. I've performed salah before. I am a Muslim, I have Iman in Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala. So on Yawm Al-Qiyamah, we expect to see those good deeds. So we should add all of the fasting of Ramadan onto that expectation that we have. That I expect on Yawm Al-Qiyamah because I have done the actions of a Muslim and because of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has promised me on behalf of Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala, I expect the forgiveness from Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala. And this is something that believers should have. A confidence. It's a level of confidence that Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is talking about here. And in other ahadith, Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam also talks about this confidence. He says, if you ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, ask for Firdaus. When asking about Jannah, ask for Jannah to Firdaus. Don't ask for the lowest level of Jannah, ask for the highest. Now Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has also taught us that none of us deserve Jannah. In one hadith, he himself says, no one can enter Jannah without the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so then the Sahaba asked him, what about you? He says, not even me. I cannot even enter the lowest level of Jannah without the mercy of Allah. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Yet he teaches us to ask for the highest level of Jannah. We don't deserve the lowest, but we're supposed to ask for the highest. Why? Because you and I don't deserve Jannah. Not the lowest, not the highest. No part of Jannah is what we deserve. However, the one who gives Jannah gives very openly. He's very generously, he's very kind, he's very merciful. And he wants us to believe that there is a Jannatul Firdaus so that we may ask for it. So if Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is asking for Jannatul Firdaus, we can ask for Jannatul Firdaus. He tells us to ask for it. This is something that we should do. We should have this level of confidence in Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala. Does Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala lose anything by giving us Jannatul Firdaus? Absolutely not. Every single creature that Allah has created, He can give all of them Jannatul Firdaus if He wanted to. And it would not decrease anything of what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala owes or what He owns. So we need to ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we need to be very confident in our dua. When you make a dua, be very strong in your dua. Also, we're taught amongst the adab and etiquettes of dua, I'm going a little bit off track here, I'm talking about dua, but it's very pertinent that we understand these aspects. But we don't say insha'Allah in our dua. Oh Allah, give me Jannah if you want. Oh Allah, save me from the fire of Jahannam if you want. Rather, we're supposed to be jazim, meaning we're supposed to be very firm in our dua. Allah, I want Jannah. I want to be saved from Jahannam. Not if you please. Allah, save me from Jahannam. And if you look at all the duas in the Quran and the Hadith, they're like this. رَبَّنَا آتِنَا فِي الدُّنْيَا Oh Allah, give us in dunya. It is a request, but it is also a command. 
we don't command Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but the way it's phrased is very firm. We have to be firm in our duas. Don't be shaky. Don't say, oh Allah, you know, if you want, maybe say, Allah, I, I want Jannatul Firdaus. And inshallah, if that dua is accepted, Allah will give you the tawfiq to work for it. He will allow you to be someone who works hard for that. And you will be among those who deserve. Inshallah, through, through His mercy, of course, we'll be able to go to Jannah itself. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa also says, Man, man sama Ramadan, wa arafa hududa, wa tahafadha ma yanbaghi lahu an yatahafad, kaffara ma qabla. And Imam Ibn Hibban, he narrates this in his Sahih. He says, on the authority of Abu Sa'id bin Al-Qudri, that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa said, those who fast in Ramadan and know the limitations, arafa hududa, they protect themselves from the things that they're supposed to protect themselves from. Everything before that will be erased. What is Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam saying here? If you fast in this month and you have knowledge, you have to understand what constitutes a fast. What is fasting for Allah? Why should we fast for Allah? What things nullify and break the fast? What things should I be doing during my fast? What things should I be avoiding during my fast? When you know these boundaries of what a fast is, and you fast accordingly, every sin that we've done before is gone. So at the end of Ramadan, inshallah, and that's why it's so important that we learn about our deen. We need to learn about what is fasting. How, what is the optimum way of fasting? And when we apply this, inshallah, we leave Ramadan feeling very light. And this is an effect that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give us because we fasted. Our bodies are lighter because we fasted physically from food and drink. And our spirits are much lighter. We've made a lot of dua. We've shed a lot of tears. We've reached out to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We asked many things from Him. And we have yaqeen that He will give us those things. So this is the ta'aleem and the teaching of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that we understand our deen and we have yaqeen and firm faith in the promises of Allah. We have to have faith in His promises. In another hadith narrated by Imam Muslim, Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa is reported to have said, As-salawatu al-khams wal-jumu'ah ila al-jumu'ah wa Ramadan ila Ramadan mukaffiratum ma baynahunna idha jtunibat al-kabair. Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa says, the five times salah that you experience, five times throughout the day, one Jumu'ah to the next Jumu'ah. One Ramadan to the next Ramadan. All of these things. They will remove the sins of everything in between. So when you perform Salatul Fajr, after Salatul Fajr, maybe you've sinned. And we're always doing sin whether we realize it or not. Maybe we're supposed to be doing something better or not doing the optimum thing. When we perform Salatul Dhuhr, the sins that were done in between Fajr and Dhuhr are erased. Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says. And then when we perform Salatul Asr, the sins that we perform between Zuhar and Asr are erased. It removes the sins by performing Salat. And so on and so forth. With every Salat, it removes the sins done from the previous time period. Similarly, Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says, from every Jumu'ah, we're performing, we're here for Salatul Jumu'ah right now. This Jumu'ah and last Jumu'ah, we can think about how many sins we have committed. By performing this Jumu'ah, Allah will remove the sins that we have done. Similarly, he says in Ramadan, between one Ramadan and another Ramadan, if we perform them correctly, Allah will cause that to be a means of forgiveness of everything in between. So we have here means of expiation and forgiveness. We have the daily forgiveness. This is done by the five times salah. Actually, five times a day we can earn the forgiveness of Allah. Then we have a weekly forgiveness, Jumu'ah to Jumu'ah. And then we have an annual forgiveness, and it forgives the entire year's worth. And this is Ramadan to Ramadan. This is if we fast in the correct manner. So this is something that we have to understand. We need to understand the fadail, the virtues of this blessed month. This is the first step in order for us to get closer to Allah. If we don't realize the virtue of the month, there's no way we're going to fulfill its rights. We have to understand its value. 
And there's this uh, lengthy hadith that I want to share, inshallah. Hopefully I can share all of it. I'll, I'll try to decrease on the commentary because of its length. But uh, this is a hadith. Some of the narrators in this hadith, caveat and disclaimer, have been criticized before. Imam al-Munziri, the author of this book, at targhib al taqid he states that no narrator in this hadith is such that all scholars say that they're weak. Meaning some scholars say some narrators are weak, but they're not such that, every, that, that there hasn't been a scholar who has appraised them and said that they were uh, acceptable. So in a sense, we can accept this hadith, and there are other ahadith that echo the sentiments and statements found within. So it's not a sahih hadith telling you right now, some of the brothers come up and uh, try to uh, interrogate me after about the authenticity of the hadith. Imam al mundir I'll read to you what he says here. He says, uh, Abu Shaykh ibn Hibban fi kitab al-thawab wal-bayhaqi wal-lafdu lahu wa laysa fi isnadihi man ujmi'a ala da'afi. So he says, Abu Shaykh ibn Hibban narrates this hadith in the book al-thawab. Imam al-bayhaqi also narrates the hadith. These are the words of Imam al-bayhaqi. And there is no individual in the chain of narration in this hadith who has been unanimously rejected. And so that being said, for, for the academics, let's look at the hadith. Ibn Abbas radiallahu anhum is reported to have said that he has heard Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa saying, Inna al-jannata latunajjad. Jannah is beautified. Wa tuzayyanu min al-hawli ila al-hawl. Jannah is beautified from year to year. It has an annual beautification. Just like we see in the, the Kaaba Sharifa, they annually or, you know, they have a uh, timely uh, schedule where they go and they clean the Kaaba Sharifa. Jannah is beautified from year to year. Liduhuli shahri Ramadan. Due to the entrance of Ramadan, it's beautified. Allah causes Jannah to become more beautiful in the month of Ramadan. فَإِذَا كَانَتْ أَوَّلُ لَيْلَةٍ مِنْ شَهْرِ رَمَضَانِ on the first night of Ramadan, there is a wind that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sends from underneath his arsh. The arsh encompasses all of the universe. Jannah is beneath the arsh of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will send a wind from underneath the arsh that will blow in Jannah. This wind is called Mathira. And uh, Muthira means something that, that blows very generously over things, very copiously. It blows, you know, it, it doesn't spare anything and it's blowing. So there's a wind that blows from underneath the arsh. فَتَصْفِقُ وَرَقَ أَشْجَارِ الْجِنَانِ This wind will go and intermingle with the trees and the leaves in Jannah. وَحَلَقَ الْمَصَارِيعِ And the doorknobs of the, the, the doors in Jannah and the door handles of Jannah. فَيُسْمَعُ لِذَلِكَ الطَّنِينَ لَمْ يَسْمَعِ السَّامِعُونَ أَحْسَنَ مِنْهُ there will be a sound that it creates, a music. The wind of Jannah will go to the trees and then the, 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 the leaves will move and it will cause a music that no one has ever heard before. The hurul ain, these are the maidens of Jannah that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created for his slaves. They will come out of their homes and they will call out The women of Jannah will come out of their homes and they will say, they will hear this music and they will say, are there anyone to give their khitbah and the proposal so that we may marry them? Is there anyone ready to marry us? The hurul ain are told to call out to the gatekeeper of Jannah. So they say, Ya Ridwan al-Jannah. Ridwan is the angel who is in charge of Jannah. Ma hadihi layla. What is this night? It's so beautiful. There's so much music that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has caused. Fayujibuhunna bi talbiya. The Ridwan, the angel, he will respond to them over and over. Thumma yaqul, Hadihi awwalu laylatin min shahri Ramadan. This is the first night of the month of Ramadan. The doors and the gates of Jannah have been flung open for those who fast in the Ummah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Allah azza wa jal, Ya Ridwan, iftah abwaab al-jinan. Wa ya Malik, aghliq abwaab al-jahim anisa'imina min ummati Ahmad. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will call out 
O Ridwan, gatekeeper of Jannah, open the doors of Jannah. And O Malik, warden of Jahannam, lock the doors and the gates of Jahannam. For those who fast amongst the Ummah of Ahmad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Oya Jibreel, ihbit ila al ard. O Jibreel, go to the earth. Fasfid maradat al shayateen. Chain up the shayateen, the demons, the jinn. Wa gullahum bil aghlal. Tie them and, and, and fetter them. Thumma qadifhum fil bihar. Throw them into the oceans. Hatta la yubsidu ala ummati habibi Muhammad siyamahum. So that they may not disturb and damage the fast of the Muslims who follow Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. ويقول الله عز وجل في كل ليلة من شهر رمضان لمناد ينادي ثلاث مرات الله سبحانه وتعالى will have it announced on every night in the month of Ramadan there will be a caller that will call three times هل من سائر فأعطيه سؤلة in the night of Ramadan there will be a caller and they will say three times is there anyone with any kind of request so that they may be given their request هل من تائب فأتوب عليه Is there anyone who wants to do tawbah so that I may accept their tawbah? هل من مستغفر فأغفر له Is there anyone who seeks forgiveness so that I may forgive them? من يقرض المليء غير العدوم والوفي غير الظلوم Who will give a loan to the one who doesn't need it? Who will give a loan to Allah? Allah doesn't need it. Who will give it though? والوفي غير الظلوم Who will give to the one who will give you back much more? and not decrease what you have given. قَالَ وَلِلَّهِ عَزَّ وَجَلَّ فِي كُلِّ يَوْمٍ مِنْ شَهْرِ رَمَضَانَ عِنْدَ الْإِفْطَارِ أَلْفُ وَأَلْفِ عَتِيقِ مِنَ النَّارِ He said that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on every day in Ramadan at the time of iftar when we break our fasts He will have ألف ألف عتيق A thousand times a thousand slaves that are freed from the fire of Jahannam. You can do the math. كُلُّهُمْ قَدْ اسْتَوْجَبُ النَّارِ Each one was deserving of the fire of Jahannam, but a thousand times a thousand slaves will be freed, despite being deserving of the fire of Jahannam. فَإِذَا كَانَ آخِرُ يَوْمٍ مِنْ شَهْرِ رَمَضَانِ أَعْتَقَ اللَّهُ فِي ذَلِكَ الْيَوْمِ بِقَدْرِ مَا أَعْتَقَ مِنْ أَوَّلِ شَهْرِ إِلَىٰ آخِرِهِ At the end of the month of Ramadan, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will free on that last night, Allah will free from the fire of Jahannam more than what He has freed in the whole month. So every day, 1,000 times 1,000 on the last night, بِقَدَر He says the same amount that has been forgiven throughout the month, on that last night they will be forgiven. They will be saved from the fire of Jahannam. وَإِذَا كَانَتْ لَيْلَةُ الْقَدَرِ When it is لَيْلَةُ الْقَدَرِ يَأْمُرُ اللَّهُ عَزَّ وَجَلَّ جِبْرِيلَ عَلَيْهِ السَّلَامِ فَيَهْبِطُ فِي كَبْكَبَةِ مِنَ الْمَلَائِكَةِ On the night of Laylatul Al-Qadr, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will command Jibreel to descend onto the earth and he will come with a contingent of malaika. Other angels will accompany Jibreel alayhi salam. وَمَعَهُمْ لِوَاءٌ أَخْضَرٌ They will have a green flag. Jibreel alayhi salam will have a flag with him, a green flag. فَيَرْكُزُ الْلِوَاءَ عَلَى ظَهْرِ الْكَعْبَةِ He will land on the Kaaba and he will put the flag on top of the Kaaba. This is the flag of Laylatul Qadr. وَلَهُ مِئَةُ جِنَاحِ Jibreel alayhi salam he has مِئَةُ جَنَاحِ 100 wings. مِنْهَا جَنَاحَانِ لَا يَنْشُرُهُمَا إِلَّا فِي تِلْكَ اللَّيْلَةِ We know Jibreel has a hundred wings from other hadith as well. There is two wings of Jibreel السلام, that he does not reveal except for the, on the night of Qadr, Laylatul Qadr. وَيَنْشُرُهُمَا فِي تِلْكَ اللَّيْلَةِ He will spread these wings of his special wings along with the green flag that he has planted on the Kaaba. وَيُجَاوِزَانِ الْمَشْرِقَ إِلَى الْمَغْرِبِ The angels will start at the base, the headquarters of the Kaaba, and they will spread to the east and the west. They will fly there. فَيَحُثُّ جِبْرِيلُ عَلَيْهِ السَّلَامَ الْمَلَائِكَةَ فِي هَذِهِ اللَّيْلَةِ Jibreel will encourage the other angels on this night. فَيُسَلِّمُونَ عَلَى كُلِّ قَائِمٍ وَقَاعِذٍ وَمُصَلِّمٍ وَذَاكِرٍ These angels will spread throughout the globe. Encouraged by Jibreel alayhi salam at the home base in the Kaaba Sharifa. And they will give salam to anyone standing in prayer, anyone sitting in dua, Anyone performing any type of salah or dua or doing any dhikr, the angels will come, they'll make dua, they'll give salam. And they will shake their hands. The angels will come on Laylatul Qadr and shake the hands of those people who are doing ibadah on that night. Laylatul Qadr is not necessarily the 27th night, it's the, it can be any one of the odd nights in the last 10 nights.
فَيُؤَمِّنُونَ عَلَى دُعَائِهِمْ حَتَّى يَطْلُعَ الْفَجَرِ These angels will say Ameen to your duas until Fajr. فَإِذَا طَلَعَ الْفَجَرِ يُنَادِ جِبْرِيلِ عَلَيْهِ السَّلَامِ When it is Fajr time, the Jibreel will make an announcement to all of the angels. مَعَاشِرَ الْمَلَائِكَةِ الرَّحِيلَ الرَّحِيلِ Oh angels, it's time to go. We need to go back. فَيَقُولُونَ يَا جِبْرِيلِ They will say, Oh Jibreel, فَمَا صَنَعَ اللَّهُ فِي حَوَائِجِ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ مِنْ أُمَّةِ أَحْمَدِ what has Allah done with their needs? We've seen so many Muslims today. We've seen all of them throughout the globe. They had many needs. They had many du'as. What has Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala done with them? We used to say, we, we said ameen to all of their du'as. فَيَقُولْ نَظَرَ اللَّهُ إِلَيْهِمْ فِي هَذِهِ اللَّيْلَةِ Jibreel alayhi salam will respond to these angels. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will look at his slaves on this night. فَعَفَى عَنْهُمْ He will overlook their sins. وَغَفَرَ لَهُمْ And he will forgive them. Except for four people. The Sahaba said, Oh Rasulullah, who are these four people that are not going to be forgiven? This is very important. And before Laylatul Qadr comes, we need to ensure we're not among them. An alcoholic, someone who is addicted to drinking alcohol. Someone who is very uh, disobedient to their parents, who hurts their parents' feelings. عَقُلْ لِوَالِدَيْهِ وَقَاطِعُ رَحِمْ One who cuts family ties وَمُشَاحٍ And a person who holds grudges and has enmity towards other believers. Again, the four people, an alcoholic, one who is extremely disobedient to their parents, one who cuts family ties, and one who holds grudges and hates other Muslims. As you can tell, all of these except for drinking alcohol are in dealings with other people. And when a person drinks alcohol, they usually have bad dealings with other people. This is the importance that Allah Ta'ala places on character in Islam. قُلْنَا يَا رَسُولَ اللَّهِ مَنْ مُشَاحٍ They said, O oh, Rasulullah, what is this مُشَاحٍ? There's a word that he used amongst the four. It was the person who holds grudges. قَالَ هُوَ الْمُصَالِمْ It is the one who uh, holds grudges and holds enmity against people. Now, فَإِذَا كَانَتْ لَيْلَةُ الْفِطْرِ Ramadan is over. This is the night of Eid al-Fitr. سُمِّيَتْ تِلْكَ اللَّيْلَةُ لَيْلَةَ الْجَائِزَةِ This night is called the night of Al-Jaiza. Jaiza is like a report card. The night before Eid al-Fitr, before we have Eid, the last night, which is actually the, the night of Eid, it precedes the day. We have Laylatul Al-Jaiza. That is when people are handed out their report cards. فَإِذَا كَانَتْ غَدَاتُ الْفِطْرِ بَعَثَ اللَّهُ الْمَلَائِكَةَ فِي كُلِّ بِلَادِ When it's the time for Fitr, the night time which precedes the day. Night in Islam is before the day. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will send the angels throughout. فَيَهْبِطُونَ إِلَى الْأَرْضِ They will go throughout the land. فَيَقُومُونَ عَلَىٰ أَفْوَاهِ السِّكَةِ They will stand on the different roads that people take to go to the masajid. This is before the Eid Salah. فَيُنَادُونَ بِصَوْتٍ يُسْمِعُ مَنْ خَلَقَ اللَّهِ إِلَّا الْجِنَّ وَالْإِنسِ These angels will call out with a voice that everyone can hear except for humans and jinn. فَيَقُولُونَ يَا أُمَّةَ مُحَمَّدٍ They'll say, O oh, Ummah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, أُخْرُجُوا إِلَىٰ رَبٍّ كَرِيمٍ يُعْطِي الْجَزِيلِ Come out of your homes to a very generous Lord who gives you in great amounts. وَيَعْفُوا عَنِ الْعَظِيمِ And He forgives great sins. فَإِذَا بَرَضُوا إِلَىٰ مُصَلَّاهُمْ يَقُولُ اللَّهُ لِلْمَلَائِكَةِ When they come out to the musalla, when they come for Eid Salah, Allah will say to the malaika, مَا جَزَاءُ الْأَجِيرِ إِذَا عَمِلَ عَمَلَ Allah says to the malaika, what do you think is the reward of a person who does hard work? When a worker does their work, what is their reward? قَالَ فَتَقُولُ الْمَلَائِكَةِ إِلَاهَنَا وَسَيِّدَنَا The angels will say, O oh, our Lord, our Master, جَزَاؤُهُ أَن تُوَفِّيَهُ أَجَرًا The worker's reward is that you pay them for their work. قَالَ فَيَقُولُ فَإِنِّي أُشْهِدُكُمْ يَا مَلَائِكَتِي أَنِّي قَدْ جَعَلْتُ ثَوَابَهُمْ مِنْ صِيَامِهِمْ شَهْرَ رَمَضَانِ وَقِيَامِهِمْ رِضَايَ وَمَغْفِرَتِي Allah says to the angels, I make you witness on this day, which is Eid, O my angels, that I have given in lieu of the reward that they have earned through their fasting in Ramadan and their standing, they earn my pleasure and my forgiveness. وَيَقُولْ يَا عِبَادِي سَلُونِي Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will say to us on that day, my slaves ask me, 
by my honor, la tas'aluni al-yawm shay'an fi jam'ikum li akhiratukum illa a'atitukum. Allah says, whatever you ask me of this day, I will I will give you. Regarding your akhirah, if you ask anything, you will have it. This is on the day of Eid. Wala li dunyakum illa nadhartu lakum. And if you ask anything of dunya, I will give you what is best of it. Fa wa'izzati la asturanna 'alaykum atharatikum ma raqabtumuni. By my honor, I will cover your faults as long as you ponder over me, as long as you think about me, as long as you are aware and conscious of me, which is the fruit of Ramadan, taqwa. وَعِزَّتِي وَجَلَالِي لَا أُخْزِيكُمْ وَلَا أَفْضَحُكُمْ بَيْنَ أَصْحَابِ الْحُدُودِ By my honor, on the day of Yawm Al-Qiyamah, when people come to get their rights from you, I will not make you disgraced on that day. إِنْ صَرِفُوا مَغْفُورًا لَكُمْ قَدْ أَرْضَيْتُمُونِي Go now. After the Eid Salah, go home. You have made me happy. I'm happy with you. وَرَضِيتُ عَنْكُمْ You have made me happy and I am happy with you. فَتَفْرَحُ الْمَلَائِكَةِ The angels, when they hear this from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they'll be extremely happy. وَتَسْتَبْشِرُ بِمَا يُعْطِي اللَّهُ هَذِهِ الْأُمَّةِ إِذَا أَفْطَرُوا مِنْ شَهْرِ رَمَضَانِ The angels will rejoice when they hear what has been given to those who break their fast on Eid al-Fitr. Insha'Allah. This is the, the lengthy hadith. It's very inspiring what will happen throughout this month. It's a very blessed time. It's unlike any other month, unlike any other time. We get this huge blessing once a year. But the main thing, like we said, Man Sama Ramadan, and in the other narration, Man Qama Ramadan, Imanan wa Hisaban, Who has all of this that was mentioned in the hadith? Those who fast and they stand in Ramadan with Iman and Ihtisab. They have faith in all of this. They believe in Allah. They believe in the promises that were laid out by Rasulullah And they work accordingly. They expect that reward. When they work accordingly, this is what is in store. This is what we need to work for. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَبِذَٰلِكَ فَلْيَتَنَافَسِ الْمُتَنَافِسُونَ Regarding this, regarding Jannah, regarding Akhirah, regarding His forgiveness, regarding His pleasure, this is what we should vie for. This is what we should compete for. This is what we should compare with one another for. Not for this dunya, but for the pleasure of Allah. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless us in this beautiful month. Give us tawfiq to vie with one another in goodness and give us tawfiq to please Him and have all of these promises, believe in them, and work hard for them inshallah wa sallallahu tabarak wa ta'ala ala khayri khalqi muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in rahmatika ya arhamu rahmatika